historically modern. There was once a princess who had spent 12 years embroidering a kerchief. She did it in gold and colors. It was exquisite. She started quite young. And just as it was finished and she took it out on the hillside with her friends to show them her beautiful scarf, down came a crane and snatched the scarf and flew away with it and it was gone. Oh, the princess was distressed and she wept and she cried and her father says, I'll buy you another scarf. No, I wanted that one. I made it with my own two hands. It was, it was for my true so It was for my true love and she would not be consoled. Her father thought to distract her with ideas of marriage, but no, she would not hear about it. She says, the only thing you can do for me is to build me a bathhouse and I will be the bath attendant and I will sit there and people may come in and have a free bath if only they tell me a story. For certainly anybody who has seen that scarf will surely remember it and talk to me about it. <clears throat> So for two years, the princess sat in the bathhouse and people came in and they were so happy to have a wonderful warm bath. And they did, they told us stories of this and that, but her scarf, her kerchief was never mentioned. Now we must leave her waiting and take you to the, another cottage in the town where lived a woman who had three daughters and the youngest was afflicted with madness. She would insist upon going out at night, though her mother and her sister beat her and tried to lock her in the cottage. Now, one night when she had been thoroughly beaten and locked in, she insisted upon sleeping right by the front door. But she did not sleep. She sat up in the night and she peeked out the keyhole. And what did she see? She told her family in the morning, I saw, I saw a fine dervish upon a white horse wearing a bright scarf around his hat. I must go to the bathhouse. He said, no, nobody wants to hear that. But she insisted and she got away from the, and she went to the bathhouse and she told the princess, I saw through the keyhole a dervish sitting on a fine charger. He had a bright gold scarf around his hat. He was leading a train of camels, he was playing a little pipe. And when I heard that pipe, it gave me the strength to break through the door and follow him. And follow him I did. I followed behind the camel train and we came to a grand palace. And then I spied on him in the palace. And as soon as he got inside, he took off his dervish robes. He sat down, he toyed with his food and he took that beautiful scarf and he ran it through his fingers and he said, oh, little hands that made you to wear on breast or head, would that God would break the curse so that we too may be wed. And then he went to bed. Now the princess knew this scarf and she took the girl by the shoulders and she said, if you take me to this place, I will freely give you half my kingdom. So nothing would do, but the princess must come to the house of the mad girl. And her family was amazed to have this royal guest and she insisted on sleeping right by the door. So that in the night, when she and the mad girl heard the flute be played, they looked through the keyhole and there was the dervish on a fine charger followed by a long string of camels. And they both went out and followed behind. And just as the mad girl had seen, he came up to a great palace and the princess and the mad girl crept in the doorway and they watched as he took off his dervish robe and underneath he was an angel of a man. And he took the gold and embroidered scarf and he ran it through his fingers and he lamented, oh, little hands that made thee to wear on breast or head, would that God would break the curse so that we too may be wed. And the princess stepped out from behind the door and she said, here are the hands that made you that scarf. It was you who took it from me. And he says, it is you I have been hoping to find. Now the princess had brought a little vial of water from her bath and when she sprinkled it over the young man, the curse was broken and he would keep his handsome young form. And then she sprinkled the water over the mad girl 
and the mad girl was restored to sanitary. Sanity and no longer wandered at night for she was to inherit half the kingdom. The princess took the young man back to her own palace and introduced him to her father and they were married and the wedding lasted 40 days and 40 nights and they and the mad girl lived happily ever after. That's the end. Thank you.